velocity banking, and mastering and maximizing your retirement income and lifestyle when we approach retirement, right? So leading up to it. And once you're in retirement, how do we continue to utilize the velocity banking concept and then add on these other vehicles that can be very, very beneficial uh, for us that maximizes cash flow, maximizes income, ultimately allows you to live a better lifestyle, the lifestyle you desire, the lifestyle you've been working so dang hard for, right? So with that being said, I've got my good friend Daniel in the house with us to go through a case study that we've been working on for all of 2024. Daniel came in toward the tail end of this specific client that we've been working with. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of context of what we'll be doing today. And then Daniel's going to lead us, right? So first off, we have, and I just want to share some cool things that just for those of you who are, you know, listening live and those of you catching the replay, however it is that you come across my material or, or Daniel's or, or someone else, I always like to know that. That gives me really good context in terms of the type of material you're watching and how I can cater the approach that I take with you, right? So if you're heavily involved in crypto and you're watching four or five different YouTube channels around crypto, how to invest and make your wealth in there, well, my financial coaching is going to be catering your stewardship, how you manage your money and what we cash flow. And I'm going to encourage us to look more towards crypto. I'm not going to be the guy that's like, that's a scam. Stay away from that. No, I'm actually going to do equal amount of research you've done in the area you're trying to grow in. And I'm going to accommodate and understand that a little bit more and then put together different you know, risk factors, understanding our behaviors with our finances and what causes us to invest in that over this, this over that, or this and that, that sort of thing, right? So to give you a little context, we're dealing with a, a female client, 70 years old. Uh, this person found me through Christy Van's YouTube channel. Most of you watching uh, and catching the recording probably know Christy Van at this point. She is a viral velocity banking sensation in the last two years, I want to say now. I think she's been active for two years creating content, has over 900 videos at this point, last time I checked. Wow. So this is a woman that literally did exactly what I and my good friend Alex Albaran, that Daniel, you know who that is, um, mm -hmm. really encourage Christy Van to start her YouTube channel, start serving people. She wanted to coach, she wanted to train people on their finances. So I had the honor and privilege to be her coach for a time. And then I introduced her to Alex Albaran, my coach on the business and marketing side. And the two of them just created a, a, a really awesome YouTube channel. And so with that, this particular person, the client that we're dealing with, not going to disclose any, any, any names, but she found me through her channel and then started watching uh, Chris Noggle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with Infinite Banking. And then she came across my channel and we started doing some, some work together. So shout out to Christy for that. And her goal was she has a set dollar amount of income coming in. So when we first started talking, our first conversation was in January of this year. And we were dealing with a certain amount of debt. So just kind of taking it to the whiteboard here for a second. And this will be cool for you to see, Daniel, because I don't, I don't think you got to see these specific numbers. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I first, when we first met, her income was $6,069. And this was all fixed income. This was made up of annuity income, social security, and an alimony check. The alimony check was the bulk of her income, right? So she was getting $12.59 a month from her annuity, $4,000 a month from alimony, which expires in three years, exactly June 2026. That'll run out. And then she's getting Social Security, $810 a month. Her expenses at the time, when we first met, were $4,493. 
33 cents total debt 162,403 bucks and with a cash flow of roughly $1,500. And the debt breakdown was a credit card, a car, and a mortgage, right? 1423 mortgage payments, 6.125%, and then a car, 353 at 7.94%. Fast forward to today, income is now 4,810, so it went down, and we'll explain why that is. Expenses down, 2804, debt, zero how on earth did that happen in such a short period of time and cash flow two thousand five dollars seventy five cent a month so a lot of really interesting things occurred with this case study and the reason why i want to share this with my audience uh, and dan's going to speak to this a lot is daniel revealed some things that i didn't even know was possible as to how we can restructure debt how we can reorganize how and when we take income and how to improve the overall cash flow situation it's not just about getting out of debt as quickly as possible although that is a viable option and has worked for many of my clients and it's typically the the focus getting out of debt extremely fast. Where it gets tricky is when we start dealing with folks in their late 60s and 70s when they're on a fixed income, we're dealing with a type of person that's never started a business before, doesn't have a desire to be an entrepreneur, doesn't have a desire to take on massive risk to service clients and, and you know take on risk in the market, make all this money. So it's like, hey, how do we work with what we already have and just increase efficiency, remove key risk in the situation overall, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and ultimately be able to provide guarantees in, in the midst of the strategies that we're gonna be presenting here today. So that gives you the context for everybody listening and watching. Yep. I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna take a drink of water real quick. I'm gonna give Daniel <laughs> the floor, right? Before my voice just starts cracking and yeah, so Daniel, give us a little bit of context, just yeah. your experience working with this type of person and who you enjoy working with the most. Uh, and then we'll just start to peel this back layer by layer, pretty much what we've been doing, what we yeah. planned. And now fast forward to, to, to today, what has happened and how we're going to continue to create success uh, wow. with this particular strategy. That's the best intro ever. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I, first of all, I love working with these clients. My, my favorite type of person to work with is just anyone who genuinely wants to set up the retirement to be something that they can take advantage of and very optimal and they can enjoy to the fullest. So that's where I really get a lot of joy in helping people to create that. This particular case was very, very interesting. And what I always you know, want to remind everybody that I never want to take for granted is like what I was able to do was actually a very small role. There was many people involved in, in this case study and it, none of it would have been possible without Denzel teeing it up and going through that velocity banking process to get it to where we had a chance to help this person for retirement. So I just want to say it's really cool and unique to, when you see velocity banking leading into retirement, I think that's really special and it can be the right solution for a lot of people. That's, I think, how Denzel and I got so close together because I practice velocity banking and I think it makes so much sense if you put it as a process before someone enters their kind of pre-retirement thought process and kind of get their debts and everything moving cohesively in one direction. That's just going to improve cash flow because at the end of the day, retirement is just figuring out your cash flow and you can either increase your income from your assets or decrease your monthly obligation of liabilities. Both are equally important and oftentimes you're much more favorable to decrease those liabilities. So I think that's what kind of sets the stage for how we were able to assist this client. But, you know, I want to break down this case study because I want to pick up where Denzel left off. We got everything lined up through the velocity banking process to get her debt down and cash flow in a better place. But if you, if you hear something very interesting and unique for this person was she, the bulk of her income was an alimony payment that was going to stop in June. And, you know, that's really problematic. Now, um, if you think about it, it's really a unique situation because she's 70 and she's about to lose, what is that, you know, um, the majority of her income, 
right? Yeah, I mean, it's about more to than pay. more than fifty percent, right? It's a four thousand oh, yeah. dollar consistent check that we have to also right. pay taxes on. Yeah, uh, essentially eighty percent of your income is going away, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's a big challenge. Like, how do you solve for that, right? She already has an annuity. She has social security that makes up about 2000 a month, but she really needs 3000 a month after her mortgage payment, which is 1400, right? And she's 70. So this required a lot of different professionals on the team. It required a long process of just learning about what was actually possible. It required a really creative solution, but we had to bring in mortgage brokers, uh, financial advisors, uh, CPA, insurance professionals. So, I mean, you know, we had to bring in like a lot of people to figure this one out together, but what it ultimately required was she had told me, Hey, you know, I could actually work for about five years, part-time 20 hours a week and pull in roughly, roughly about 2,500 a month. And that would not be too hard for me. In fact, I actually would enjoy that. That would be something I'd welcome in this season of life. So I said, okay, cool. So we can go create 2,200 a month. That's, that's great but that's still not going to like get us the solution, right? When that four grand drops out, there's going to be a gaping hole that we need to fill and 2,200 a month is only going to provide a solution for five years. So what is that really going to be able to do for us? Well, what that was able to do for us was that was able to help us pay off the car, right? Obviously. So that was good. Um, we talked about getting rid of the debt and the car, getting rid of the car was $353 a month. Um, the other thing was the mortgage professional recommended a HECM a home equity conversion mortgage because she was 70 and she had the right equity ratio and it aligned with her overall long-term strategy with inheritance with her daughter and family and everybody like that. Um, that was able to remove 1400 a month. So I remember what I said earlier, it's either the creation of income or the absence of the obligation from the debt. Either one has the same net impact on the person we're trying to help. So for her freeing up 1400 a month that didn't require her to contribute any cash to anything was very helpful. Now, the next thing we did was we said, okay, well, that 2,200 is enough to provide what that annuity payment was providing for you. We're in a different interest rate environment. Could we replace that annuity, defer it for five years and get a higher payment? And the answer to that was yes. So her $1,259 a month annuity payment, if she could turn it off, let it grow for five years, and then turn it back on with a new company that was paying a higher rate, her payment was going to be over 2200 a month. So that was a that was a massive increase. We took that asset that was generating essentially 1200 a month right. with no no premium, got that asset to generate almost $1000 more a month. That's very important guys to understand. So we're, we're we're talking about someone that already had an existing annuity. And for those mm -hmm. that have never heard of annuities before because this is a channel that barely ever talks about annuities because I myself wasn't too educated on annuities until I finally met uh, Daniel and he you know, broke it down for me and the value of it mm -hmm. is a, it's essentially a guaranteed type of insurance product provided by life insurance companies that pays out a guaranteed amount of income for as long as the person lives. And there's variations of this, how much it can grow by and different things. So um, something very similar to an annuity would be a pension plan. Right, everybody is pretty much familiar with with pensions. So, so an annuity works just like a pension. And so, with that, this particular person already had this annuity, and she was already collecting income from the annuity, that twelve fifty nine number. And what I didn't know what was possible is Daniel said, "Well, we can actually stop the income payments for a time because we're dealing with a specific." case this person that has a desire and ability to work a job that she would enjoy mm -hmm. and she can bring in that same amount or double amount of money for at least the next five years at least yeah right so that's that's cool because then it's like oh, okay mm -hmm. well we can instead of continuing drawing from that income now that we no longer need at the moment we'll need it later for sure but as of right now, we don't need it. We can actually uh, basically is the is the right term roll over that annuity into another annuity. Is that mm -hmm. what, that's the right terminology there? Okay, cool. So that's that's one strategy that we did so far was we rolled over an existing annuity with the existing amount of money that was in there, put it into a new annuity, deferred it, and we'll turn income on later. And because yeah. of the environment we're in today, 
annuities yeah. are paying much higher interest rates than they were five, six, seven, however many years ago she got hers, this particular right. person. So that's yeah. huge. It didn't cost her anything. You don't have to come out of pocket. You don't have to qualify for an annuity. It's just a matter of how much capital you have and how much you are willing to wait. And so you're saying that we went from 1259 and now you're able to guarantee her in five years, roughly, you said 2200? 2200 roughly, yeah. So that's that's what is important to stop and pause right here. This is a great point to, to highlight on, right? Like when you're looking at retirement, you're looking at cash flow, like I said earlier. Yeah. And we were able to increase her cash flow by the absence of the mortgage of 1400 and the additional income of the annuity of 1000 that's a $2,400 a month swing that didn't require any additional capital from her. So that's why that it's so important to, to look at retirement through the lens of cash flow, especially when you're coming from the velocity banking path. Because if you're looking for you know ways to increase cash flow, we want to do it with as little cash required as possible. There's two ways. Now, here's the punchline. When she retires again, okay, in five years from her part-time work, she'll be 75. The alimony will have stopped, but now her new income from her annuity and her social security in the absence of her mortgage actually meets her needs for expenses for retirement. But that's not the end of the story. But I, but I just want to let you know that's how we arrived there. So she had a basically, you know, catastrophic emergency, you know, hurling towards her for her retirement. And we were able to, through some cooperation and collaboration on her part, to be able to be willing to go back to work for 20 hours a week. You know, now again, our recommendations don't always center around people going back to work. It just happened to be what was optimal for her in this particular circumstance. Um, yeah. you know, it, it's pretty rare actually, but you know, it just worked out well. We were able to help her to basically save her retirement in this case study. Right. And we're not talking getting a full-time job, doing a, doing a job we don't like. She got something she actually enjoys doing, right? So that's key. Is like yeah, she had you... said it would bring her fulfillment, so it was in alignment with what she yeah. wanted out of that in life. And something I'm getting my audience and my clients to understand more of is the definition, the true definition, the original definition of the word work, which means to become who you are, right? So if wow. I'm working in my skills, gifts, and talents in my purpose, then then work is not work, work is play, work is joy, work is peace, work is fulfillment. So you're able to replace the 40 plus years of you having to having to work at a job or career that you do not love, but it pays the bills, to yeah. now be in a place where you're working on who you are, you're becoming more of yourself that mm -hmm. you like. And that yeah. could be in the form of traveling and experiencing things, but that mm -hmm. runs out. Right. Not everyone is traveling 365 days a year, year over year, yeah. nor are you in your dream car 24 hours a day, nor are you in your dream house 24 hours a day, nor are you anything that you material things that we desire in life. You're going to experience them time to time to time to time, and it's going to, you know, change. But there is a you're still with you all day long. And yeah. so if you attach to these material things, it ultimately does not bring that joy, peace, and fulfillment. But right. when you have the things that you do like and desire, great in combination with the skills, gifts, and talents that you, that you own and possess, where you can yeah. create value, you're creating wealth, you're creating impact, that combination is perfect formula for a retired individual to experience joy for the remaining amount of time that they've been blessed with on this on this planet until they graduate Earth, right? So, just right. powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Yeah. Uh, so continue, continue. So yeah, that, I mean that's very well said, and you know that's really the point is we don't want anybody feeling any type of stress when they're going into their retirement. We want to help people solve challenges. Now, let me bring up another key point is not only was was she feeling great about this but we brought in the advisor to look at the remaining assets she had to see how they could be managed and and you know to help for other retirement risks right because just because we met her needs today obviously with inflation in 10 years that income purchasing power is going to be diminished 
So, you know, that was why it was important to bring in the advisor to look at other assets, say, hey, how could we manage these to help mitigate that inflation risk and look at other risks like long-term care, tax risk, things that are going to come up that we're going to need to deal with. So, you know, that was step two of the process was bringing in the full team to say, okay, here, this is, these are the right people you need to speak with. And they were able to help, you know, position some of those other remaining assets to look towards the future to keep an eye on things like inflation and those other key risks that are essential to neutralize. Right. So with that, we brought in the financial advisor Mm -hmm. because in addition to removing the house payment, we removed temporarily the annuity check, rolled it over into another annuity where it's going to increase later when she's ready to turn that income on. Yeah. We... Um, we have part-time work, which is increasing our income about $2,000 mm-hmm. a month. Yep. Now she also had a lump sum amount of cash savings. Right. right. Um, so that we went to the financial advisor. And so what occurred there or what has occurred so far as it relates to that? So, yeah, a portion of it went into just keeping it liquid and making sure she managed some of that liquidity appropriately. And then the other portion went into another income annuity similar to the first one that she exchanged for where it could defer. And that was going to be her first barrier to an inflation hedge was, hey, in 10 years, you know, after five years of receiving your new income, if we need a step up, we can increase it with that payment, which that payment right there will provide like an additional 900 a month. From just that wow. one additional income annuity payment. Wow. So in five years, she gets a, a basically almost a thousand dollar a month, nine hundred dollar a month raise, you know, to to and that what that does, Denzel, is if you look at her income now, she's got five years of part time work in the first deferral of the first annuity. Then she's got uh the second, you know, five years where she could choose to turn on that extra annuity. But now that gives her ten years for the remainder of her assets to sit and grow and build, it changes the time horizon. So that's why using annuities can be like a great tool for retirement. Like someone asked me the other day, they said, well, why would you use an annuity over just pulling withdrawals from your portfolio? And I said, well, if you look at the 4% rule, okay, they say, if you have a portfolio, you can take 4% and never run out of money. Well, let's say you have a million dollars. Okay. So that means that million dollars is responsible for generating you $40,000 a year, 4%. Well, why would I do that when I could take 400,000, roll it into a lifetime income annuity, defer it for the appropriate amount of time until I need it for retirement. That 400,000 will generate me 40,000 a year. And that means the other 600,000 is now liberated to grow for a much longer period of time or whatever I needed to do for me. So it's just a more efficient way of creating retirement income, more optimal, I should say. And you know, for people who are on this channel for cash flow secrets and ways to boost cash flow, that's what an annuity is. Like, I think we should take some time to explain really, it can be confusing because there's different types of annuities, but at their core, when you're looking at them for retirement income, you're purchasing them to protect your money and for them to give you a guaranteed amount of income. And, and what that means, people always ask, like, what does that mean guaranteed income? That's how much they're going to provide. Yes. But what happens is when they are spending down that annuity, you're spending through principal and interest. When all of that runs out, that's where the guarantee kicks in. That's where you and your spouse, if you elected, are going to get that check for as long as either one of you lives, even once you run out of money. So that's why it's so important for people to realize they're, they're vehicles that for people who need a certain amount of income and need to count on that. So if you ever hear any press about annuities, whether they're good or bad, you know they just serve a function. They're just for people who right. want to be able to protect their cash flow. And if you look at it, this is always interesting too. like, look at her scenario, right? So with that additional annuity, she purchased, she rolled, she did an additional purchase of an income annuity of $80,000 in 10 years at 80,000 is guaranteed to provide her 900 a month. So look, look at that. That's almost a 12% payment for life based on what she put in originally. Right? So if you, if you had $80,000 and you said to somebody, Hey, this 80,000 will generate you $900 a month guaranteed for the rest of your life, you just have to wait 10 years. They'd be like, Oh my gosh, I couldn't like probably invest money on my own to get it to equal what that could do in that amount of time. And and even if you did, even if you did and got more money, you still would not be able to withdraw the percentage amount of 20%. Not guaranteed. guaranteed. Right. Not guaranteed. You will run out of money. You could, but you know what Dr. Wade Fow just taught us? So Dave Ramsey, and I'm not trying to bash Dave Ramsey, but he just did a video where he was like, oh, if you're making 12% on your money, you can take out 10 and never run out. 
and everybody who you know looks at retirement like me got sick to their stomach wade fow actually crunched the numbers on that you'll run out of money for the average life expectancy two-thirds of the time so so think about that people are like oh my portfolio makes 12 a year so i can take 10 and never run out that stands to reason right if you're making 12 you could take 10 you wouldn't even touch the principal right why would that not make sense well because you don't earn 12 every year some years you lose money and and the year you take 10 percent out there will cause you to now never recover and never get those gains back and run out of money two thirds of the time. So right. taking 10%, you can do it. You're just going to run out of money, you know, 65, 66% of the time. Yeah. And that's, that's the detriment of the seven baby steps. If you follow the seven baby steps all the way mm -hmm. through yeah, and you successfully pay off all your debt and you successfully invest 15% of your income in mutual funds and you, grow to a million plus dollar portfolio and you retire healthy, free, all that, whatnot, cash flow positive, and mm -hmm. you make one decision, you make one decision to do an annual or, or a total withdrawal of, of eight to 10% of your income of what your portfolio has amounted to two million, three million, five million. It doesn't matter what the number is. Mm -hmm. If you withdraw that eight to 10%, comparable mm -hmm. to what you are averaging in terms of a rate of return yeah 66 plus percent of the time you run out of money before mm -hmm. you pass away and yeah. so yeah and what here's about the other being able to leave money behind so that so now we, right. we've limited how much money we leave behind and right. we also run out of cash that it, it's yeah. like you did everything right though that's what's insane and one well, and killed it yeah Exactly. That's so well said. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yes, that's what's so scary about that video that Dave Ramsey made was, yes, you did everything right your whole life. You make one decision and you can't fix that. I mean, that's, you know, you, you mess that up a couple years in a row. Like, look at, think about somebody doing that this year. They're probably terrified right now, right? With all the volatility going on. Oh, so, yes. you know, I think what happens is people don't actually talk to enough 70 and 80 year old and 90 year old people. I'm blessed to talk to 20 to 25, sometimes you know, if you count the phone, maybe as many as 300 a week. And so, um, you know, I, a lot of these people that I serve who are retired in their 80s, they were some of the most engaged, active, creative entrepreneurs of their time. Right. So everybody always keeps themselves in their current mindset. And they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm very entrepreneurial and I'm a great investor and I would never buy an annuity because I can outperform one. And right. You have this mentality now. But when you're in your 80s, you just don't have the same priorities you have now you they change time is different life is different you're thinking about different things you probably don't want to crunch the numbers anymore you probably just want the numbers to provide a check so you can go out and enjoy the time you have that's the moral of the story and so a lot of people are like oh well i can outperform my annuity it's like okay well then yeah if that's what makes you feel you're making the most of your retirement then do that but the average person is not gonna to wanna to try to do that. They're not gonna to wanna to stress because here's the crazy part about that two thirds example, Denzel. It's not just that two thirds of the time you run out of money, it's the whole journey is ruined. Like, you know, you're gonna run out of money. Yeah. And at a certain point- you're worrying about it. You're just, the stress is destroying your life until then. I'm working with two people right now that are currently running out of money. There's nothing I can do. They came to me like that. I meet with them regularly and I, you know, talk, talk to them through some creative solutions, but there's nothing they can do. I mean, look, when you get to, if you're 79 years old and you have $40,000 and you're running a thousand dollar a month deficit, you can kind of figure it out. There might be a couple of things that could delay it a little while longer, but you're going to run out. And, and that's, what's a terrifying prospect for people they don't want to deal with. So yes. it's actually beneficial to them. It's worth it. That's why they're saying you live, you know, a much happier and healthier life with lifetime income because you don't have that stress, you don't have that worry. It's just removed. Absolutely. So let's do a quick recap on what's been going on so far. So with this case study, right, we meet the client where they're at. We show them different things that we can do to improve cash flow, reduce expenses, right? It's now August. We have 4810 coming in and income 2804 roughly going out and expenses were cash flowing two grand. We put mm -hmm. an entire team together, financial coach, that's me insurance agent, that's Daniel, CPA, financial advisor, mortgage professional, to all of us to come into alignment 
to solve for this person's needs specifically. So a lot of people, you know, coming together. And I think you absolutely need a, a financial team as we get older and older, because you want to be able to simplify your life as we get older and older. We don't know what will happen to us cognitively, right? Mm -hmm. Our memory, right? Different things can happen that to the best of us, memories go, yeah. you know, just cognitive function, mobility, things, decay and so the last thing you want to be doing is running numbers on an excel make errors make a financial decision and it blows up in your face right rather than it's just like how do we just secure income according to your lifestyle and then anything above that is is gravy right so that's what occurred there and so with that we have the home equity conversion mortgage strategy which removed the entire obligation to pay this mortgage. So the, the mortgage gets removed entirely. And now Correct. we have this home equity conversion mortgage, which is in the reverse. So this, the debt is still quote unquote there, but it's not obligated for her to pay that debt. And yes, the debt is increasing now, but she is receiving an income from it. And with other strategies in place, when she eventually graduates earth, She's not going to leave a massive debt behind for her family. And if we did leave a massive debt behind, we're going to have other vehicles in place to basically pay for that strategy set up for the heirs to take over that specific property. Then we did the annuity rollover, the existing annuity, rolled it over. Now that annuity is going to pay out more income, 2200 bucks. We paid off the car, right? So that's 353 increased cash flow. Part-time work, 2000 income going up, additional annuity, right? And mind you, I didn't even count this 2K and that right. 48 and that 4810. That's yeah. alimony and the social security. So I didn't even count that. So technically our income is back where we first started, even though we removed that 1259. So that's cool. And then we got an additional annuity based off of cash savings that she already had, and that will pay an additional $900. So we're looking at 922 and 810 of guaranteed lifetime income so far. Right? Yep. And and the HECM over time will also be able to pull income from that. I'm not sure if you have the numbers on that in terms of what what that will potentially produce for her in the next couple of years. Um, I know right now we're not pulling anything from it, right? No, it uh, can. It has that ability to actually produce income. The mortgage broker could bring that on, and it depends on the projection they run based on appreciation and stuff like that. So I don't know that that's, you know, when we're doing all this income mapping, we're only using things that we can guarantee and count on. So, you know, the absence of debt, we can count on. The annuities, we can count on. The HECM, um, it may provide income, but you know, it may, it also may not, it depends on how the house appreciates. So, right. The whole purpose of it was to remove the 1423 today. So that yes. we take that cash flow, save it. Yeah. And use that to increase it, whether it's to buy more annuities later on. Right. And then if it doesn't produce anything, I mean, we still have the ability maybe to buy life insurance. So I'm not sure if that's another thing that we're looking at here for her. Yeah. Maybe it's some sort of a life insurance strategy for her uh, yeah. to be able to have the death benefit to just basically wipe out anything she would leave behind. So, so far right. we've achieved guaranteed income of 3,910 three years from now, June, 2026, if I'm not mistaken, or a little bit after that, maybe 2020. Eight. Yeah, she's still going to get some time with that alimony and right. uh, she's got some time on it. And the other thing, Denzel, if I can jump in is not only did we get back to the original income number she was before, but that was with the absence of the annuity and the absence of the alimony. So right. what's, what's important to touch on in this example is because she was working with you, okay, you're like the you know primary care physician, right? You're there helping her with everything you notice this particular cash flow challenge she's going to have coming up in three years in retirement, you bring in us. And now if you go back to your screen real quick, 
that whole sleeve of that whole team you wrote on that chart, right? Right in the middle, right? The team. Yeah. All of those professionals, first of all, those are just the ones that made the cut. We, we took her scenario to, to multiple people in each role on the team. I wasn't even the insurance agent in this case. We brought in a different agent. So, you know, we, this whole team that came about, first of all, didn't cost her anything. Yeah. to get an evaluation from everybody in a complete environment with each professional present. And the other thing was, you know, not only did it not cost her anything, we went through, we evaluated it within our team, multiple professionals. We picked the best ones that, that came here. And a lot of people have told me over my career, they're like, Daniel, you know, why do you do your, why do you run your organization like this? You could be making way more money if you were like an affiliate with all these different people, right? There's a CPA, there's an advisor, there's a mortgage professional, but I never do that. I always just bring in the best of the best people when we have a solution, a need like this, because then when I need everybody on the team to step up for me so we can solve this case, everybody's there and willing to participate. Right. Now she had created some additional agreements, you know, that she would pay for obviously, right? Like, so, so engaging, you know, the tax attorney or the CPA or the advisor, you know, those are going to come with additional fees for their services. Right. But there was no cost for her up front to go through this process. It's not like I said, hey, pay us five grand and we'll build you a customized retirement cash flow. You know, you know, it, this was just because we put our best foot forward every time we wanted to be an extension of your team. We're like a specialist. But look at all that value you get with just one referral, right? So you're you're the quarterback, you're managing the cash flow and helping direct everything. And because you brought this in, there's just a lot of value that can be created from that one referral, which is what I wanted to touch on. Yeah, that's that's huge. That's exactly what I want to be solving for with my clients. Mm -hmm. This this right here is just so the audience knows like more case studies I want to be showing like this because now that I've been on YouTube for six years, I have clients that I met them when they were 52. Now they're 56, 57. Clients that are 55, now they're 60. I have clients yeah. 60, now they're 65. So they're in retirement now. They have fully retired, but there's still more things to solve for, right? That they have yeah. questions on. And that's where my knowledge became limited because velocity banking for the most part is solving for eliminating debt, increasing cash flow, reducing expenses, and having capital to mm -hmm. either accelerate debt or create income with. But what it doesn't necessarily solve for is lifetime income, guaranteed lifetime income, certainties, removal of key risk. Velocity banking can become a risk, right? Later on. Oh, yeah. So knowing that, okay, wait a minute, when does it make sense for me to turn this thing off, right? And mm -hmm. one of those ways to turn off velocity banking, for those of you listening who may have a first position home equity line of credit or all-in-one loan, right? And you pay off your home, now it's there. Now for the, for the duration of that draw period, maybe you leverage it now to create income. And that's great. And let's mm -hmm. say you pay off the line again, and now the, the line of credit is no longer in the draw period. Well, one way that we could use that is by turning off the revolving feature altogether, turn on that home equity conversion mortgage. And that's something mm -hmm. that you can dip into later on if it makes sense, All right? So that's like one thing to keep in mind. And then on the, the other part about when it comes to say infinite banking, right? People who are trying to, you know, max fund money into their cash value life insurance policy. They're trying to save more money into that because they think that that is a, is a, is a good income vehicle for them. It's a tax-free income vehicle, which, which yes, there's truth to that. But what happens when you start at 65? What happens when you're starting at 70? Does yeah. it still make sense to buy an expensive whole life insurance contract for the potential of a certain dollar amount tax-free, or could an annuity do the same thing for less cost, and then maybe we only purchase life insurance according to what we need and what we want mm. to leave behind, and just like pay it. a certain dollar amount for that. Meanwhile, your annuity is doing what 
you thought your cash value life insurance policy would do and it's doing it better right yeah. paying more and on a guaranteed basis even if the money runs out so yep. a lot of cool things there that we can you know really yeah. really get into so with with this um where are we at today with this particular person here on the board what what should be their primary focus as it relates to the cash flow they're producing right now because now they're in a really healthy cash flow position especially with that that 4k alimony check coming in consistently right yeah is there any additional things that they should be mindful of i've already educated them hey let's avoid debt as as much as humanly possible right let's not you know go on spending sprees let's let's create the lifestyle we actually want by mm -hmm. measuring it. So if you do desire to take vacations, if you do desire to buy clothes, buy shoes, let's actually put that in our month to month mm -hmm. living expenses. This way it's not an unknown, unexpected expense. So yeah. we can have a clear idea of what our true cash flow actually is when you factor in gifts, vacations, travels, dot 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 dot, right? So that's what yeah. I've shared with her so far is be mindful mm -hmm. of debt, be mindful of our lifestyle. It will increase, right? And so what would be some additional things that you would like to maybe throw in here or if you want to take it in a different direction, let me know. Yeah, I mean, there's new risks, right? She's going back to work. So now she's got regular risks to deal with like we do, right? Like what if she got hurt at, on the job and couldn't make her wage, right? So we you know, are looking into some ways to help make sure she's got some protections for those things put in place. Right. So she's like got what? other risks. Like, like what, like health insurance, like, yeah, like health, she's got the right insurances, right? Okay. Health insurance, ability, the right car insurance, the right umbrella policy, all these things matter. Right. And so that's why it's so important to work with a team like this, because, you know, if you think about that example, like give this scenario to the average person and then have them go run all over town and meet with all those different professionals <laughs> the, right. just to get that team on the board that was like 12 or 13 meetings we had just to get those people on the board to get to her to have a meeting mm. so i mean we you know that's a lot of time you know that's what, <laughs> for one person and not to mention it turns into a bad game of telephone so what happens to the average person is they go to the cpa the cpa goes okay you need to do this then they go to the insurance agent, insurance agent goes, CPA is nuts, you got to do this. Then they go to the advisor and they go, both of them are nuts, you need to do this. And now they're just sitting there with like a bunch of people pulling them in different directions and feeling just absolutely like they're going nowhere. Yes. And they don't have the financial experience to be able to understand each discipline, meet them at their level of understanding, and then try to translate that over multiple disciplines. It's very hard to do. It's not it's not as easy as you would think. Not everybody's always on the same page. In fact, a lot of times people disagree and you have to, again, take it from their scope of knowledge, trying to apply it to another area. And, and that's hard to do. So that's really, again, part of that value. But what she's got to focus on is this five year period because she has she, she now if she couldn't work, could she supplement the income she's making part time from her portfolio? Yes. OK, that's already covered. So she's OK. But again, it really works better if she can go back to work. And plus, she said that was part of what she wanted to be doing during that time. So, you know, we're going to be looking at those kinds of things to make sure that we're helping meet her with what she needs during this new period of working. But she's able to bank quite a bit of money for the next three years. So that's really helpful. So as long as she can do that, this works really well. And I feel really proud that we we're able to put her in a position where she's telling us, I mean, you know, earlier this year, she's looking at this, you know, impending crisis going, I'm so stressed out. Now she's like, Oh my God, thank God for Denzel and putting all this together because now I feel stress-free. I feel excited. I can travel again. I can enjoy. She's not going to get sick or had developed some type of illness or stroke, God forbid, from the stress of knowing that she's heading towards a financial cliff. Now she's not. So that's what it's about at the end of the day. Like people always want to argue with me about like, well, isn't this the best stress? It's like, the best strategy is the one that helps the client say what she told us. I think that's the best. You know, yeah. if she can get to a place where she's like, I'm happy again and life is about life again, not about money, mm -hmm. then then I feel like we're all doing our jobs. Oh yeah. Big time. So avoiding debt, insurance protection, now that we are working, making sure that she has proper 
uh, protection set up. Yep. Is there anything that we're, you know, talking to her on, on the life insurance? I have to double check. I think she has some life insurance in place already. I'm not sure if it, if it's with Chris Noggle's team. I remember her sending me a policy and I'm not sure if she actually yeah. put that in place, but do you know if that's another piece that needs to get solved is legacy passing on wealth, making sure everything's covered. If we leave any, yeah, we're working through trying to optimize that there's some other medical things there, but you know, again, it's just going to take time and be part of the process. We always try to go in terms of the order of priority, which yeah. means that we got to start with like, you know, we had to solve this big thing first, you know, the life insurance isn't going to make or break her. So we're going to, we're working True. through our process now to help her with all that part. But that's, that's definitely now what we're turning our focus towards is how do we optimize the life insurance piece to make sure that she's got the coverages she needs, you know, got for it. what she's trying to accomplish. And let's say we don't qualify, right? Right. Um, her next best option is there, yeah. would you say to have her just continue yeah. save money in a high yield savings park that grow it? And as it gets higher, we can just boom plop that right into another annuity is that would that be another potential move there not saying that that's what she should do but that is a potential yeah. move. yeah her it depends on what she's buying life insurance for right so if she wanted like tax-free utilization of the capital i i could, would say protect the heckum right, right. Like, that's what it's for right yeah let's say but that what, for now let, let me give you an example right let's say you want to um for example have the same metrics you do with your life insurance policy uh, as you do with the rest of your dollars, right? You want to be able to leverage them, but keep them in the same place and th these kinds of things with whole life. You know, you could do some of those same mechanics with other products. Solo K's, the Heckam, the First Lean HELOC. I mean, those have similar mechanics um, in some senses, right? For, for the, Each one's a little different, but the, the Solo K would be probably like one of the closer examples, right? Where you could have leverage over a portion of the money. Um, now you'd have to be a business owner for that, but, but it depends on the purpose of life insurance. If it's for protecting the heck um, you are trying to create a death benefit. If she can't qualify for life insurance, she might be able to utilize a death benefit driven annuity. So there's annuities out there that have a specific death benefit that you don't have to qualify for medically, but that will grow your assets in, you know, specifically for the purpose of passing it as a death benefit. Mm. And when you, when you, when you pick an annuity like that, and you say, hey, you know what? I don't really care about some of the other features. I want it to grow the death benefit to be as much as it can be. When you specialize like that with an insurance company over a lifetime, that's where you can do some pretty cool things. So these death benefit annuities can actually generate quite a bit of death benefit that you don't need to qualify for. And we use those all the time. Interesting. So a all death benefit annuity doesn't necessarily solve for lifetime income. I'm assuming. No, it wouldn't help with that at all, but it could be a potential suitable replacement if you couldn't qualify for life insurance and you had a yeah. long time. Because uh, to give you an example, some of these death benefit bonuses are insane. I mean, they can be really high, like, you know, very high. And they have good, good potential ways to accumulate over the rest of your life. So the death benefit annuity definitely is a, is a really cool product that's out there. It's not for everybody, but when you do have that circumstance come up, it it's really a, a great tool. So what would be required for something like that because i've got a grandfather that mm -hmm. does not qualify for any insurance we we looked and mm -hmm. not even final expense insurance and qualified for that oh, wow um, so how do how would this work what would be like a certain dollar amount maybe required okay. and is this something we pay monthly one time sure break that down let's say let's there. say for example he's got a hundred grand and he's 74 and he's uninsurable with everybody. You could put that seven, that hundred grand into a death benefit driven annuity. Depending on the bonus, you could get anywhere from, let's just say like 10 to 50% as a bonus. So let's say you get a, you know, let's say you get a huge bonus. And then depending on that way you want to choose the, how that death benefit grows, you can either choose indexing or you can choose a guaranteed roll up. So some companies will have less of a bonus, but they'll have more of a guarantee, like it's just a, a compound 6% as an example, or 7% that it'll just grow by with no bonus, or you can get a bonus and it's just going to grow based on the indexing, meaning whatever it earns from the index, it'll stack on top of that bonus for a death benefit. Generally, those are going to be paid out over five years. 
So those types of death benefits are like the company will give you a huge bonus. They'll give you a great way to grow the, the death benefit, but they're going to pay it out over five years. That's how they're able to afford that. So there's some, there's some caveats to them like that. They're also not tax free, like life insurance. I was just so about the death, to say, yeah, yeah. Death benefit is taxable. So that's a huge drawback compared to life insurance. So, you know, th these are things you have to look at, but again, it just depends on, you know, the circumstances and, and, you know, where I think we've been doing a lot of incredible work with death benefits is what we've been talking about lately, pairing up joint lifetime income annuities and survivorship policies. That's where you can do some really incredible things as well. So th the point of all this is because we are part of your team, Denzel, yeah. all of this knowledge is available to everybody who's watching, who wants to make time to go through their specific scenario. Cause just cause we went through a case study, you know, this is probably the only time we'll ever do something like this. Everybody's situation is so unique. Yeah, that it really requires us to sit down and evaluate, but we can bring all these strategies to the table, talk it through all of them, and then figure out systematically which one's the right one uh, yeah. based on individual person. I already have got my action step. For those that are listening and watching, you're going to want to book a call with Daniel and his team. I got the link there. It's been running the entire time. I myself am going to take some time for my grandpa because of I thought there were no options so all we've been doing for him he's just been saving money in a savings account earning pretty much nothing um, but we've removed a lot of the expenses that he has you know has a paid off house um, so there's again this is like really cool because I'm like oh my goodness there's there's something I could yeah. probably totally capitalize on here for the the sake of what grandpa you know our heirs our elders are going to be able to or leave behind and that say my mom doesn't have to worry about that you know or have to stress okay how are we going to pay the taxes on this okay now we got to sell it okay now the, and then take it for less and you know right. it becomes a mess overall yeah. but being able to yeah. have like we got this guarantee here however long grandpa lives it'll keep rolling up whether on a guarantee basis or an index and go from there i think that's you know super powerful so this case is ongoing and mm. she's got a ton of support support from me support from you support from the team people yeah. that she can continuously you know check in with and the fact that everybody's on the same page where it's like i'm not saying hey hey my strategy is better than dan's you know or dan's like my strategy is better than that right it's not about that it, as you mentioned it's how do we cater what we know so that she can not only comprehend it, but there's actual joy showing up in her life. Happiness, there's peace, there's freedom, there's simplicity, right? Mm -hmm. and, and full transparency, this is someone that she's like, I don't really understand the heck of, but I, I, get, I get the main points. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, right. like, I don't really know, but I know that I don't have a payment no more. And I'm like, yeah. great. Right now, obviously, yeah. I'm I'm a little more nitpicky, or I'm like, I at least need you to know this, and you know, know who to call and who to tune in, sure. and you know, make sure you get a hold of these people because there's probably ways to improve that product over the years. So just keep that in mind, keep your notes, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but so for this, we're this is pretty much completed here. Now, for those that are listening and also catching the replay. I'd also like you to bring up another strategy here that you yourself are implementing as it relates to annuities. Now, most of the videos we've done so far when talking about annuities is pretty much catered more toward people that are in their 50s and up, people who are mm -hmm. in retirement already or they're about 10 years or so away from retirement. Mm -hmm. Annuities seem to be very, very attractive for that specific audience. But if you're under the age of 50 and maybe about 30 or older, when does an annuity make sense? And if you can speak to your specific uh, situation, I'd love you to, to, to talk on that because that intrigued yeah. me a little bit. And I was yeah. like, oh, wow. Right? Because in my mind, I'm like, I'm not buying annuities until I'm way into my into my 50s. Right? That's how yeah, I right. You know educating my audience but now there's a, a a portion of people you know between the ages of 30s and before 50 where yep. there, there might be something really really unique to take a look at 
So yeah, that's about we that. had this conversation yesterday. So I, I told you I'm getting ready to purchase my first annuity. You know, being somebody who's in his mid thirties, annuities are not really on my radar because my risk capacity is different. I'm looking for things that'll grow and I can take risks, right? Real estate, stocks, crypto, things like that. Right. However, I do have a portion of my money managed with our wealth advisors and, and the people that we, you know, refer out. Um, and so, you know, I, I eat my own cooking as the expression goes. And so I have some of my solo K managed through uh, our advisory team, you know, that we refer to and, um, you know, they, even though I specify that I'm a very aggressive investor, you know, they're still going to keep portions in cash. They're still going to keep portions safe. So what I, what I did was there was an annuity that came out recently with a company called American national life insurance company. And I recently went through a process with them to be able to even discuss a specific company and product. Cause I never do that online, but they have a new product where they have a, an annuity that you can only write to age 50. It's a 20 year annuity. And it has a performance trigger on the S&P 500 TCA intraday, intraday index, which essentially is 94% of the S&P 500 roughly, right? It's like they track the S&P 500. Uh, it's just an indice that they use to do that. And you get a, approximately 94% of it. And what happens is they have a performance trigger. Now the performance trigger is one of my favorite allocations for indexing because a performance trigger says this, if it's based on the S&P 500 intraday index, and the S&P 500 index does anything but go down, so it stays flat or goes up at all, it's gonna automatically credit an interest rate. And this interest rate happens to be 8.5%. So they have an 8.5% crediting rate, and that's locked in for the life of the contract. So what people don't like indexing sometimes is they'll get, sometimes they'll get these great introductory caps and rates, but then they slowly lower them upon their renewals for the life of the index product. So maybe your cap is like 8%, and then the next year it's 7%, and then the next year it's 6% and it goes down. Some companies do that on their renewals. Uh, a lot of companies do. But this has a, a rate lock guarantee where it's locked in for the life of the contract. So it's locked in for the whole life of the annuity. So I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, if the S&P 500, we have the data on how it does over the last 100 years. If I could get 8.5% uh, lock that many times over that next 20 years, that would be a pretty cool place for me to transfer some of my safer assets with our advisory team into as an alternative, because I think they'll do better. And so for me, it made a lot of sense. So that was something exciting that I was, you know, proud to share and, and happy to share with yeah. um, the different versions of the product. They have a seven, 10 and 20 year. They have different participation. I mean, uh, performance triggers for each one, but that performance trigger locked in for that life of the contract. Like if you did the seven year. Okay. So think about it. If you were, you know, in your seventies, and you did the seven year and you said, okay, I'm the opposite of Daniel. I'm in my seventies. I want hundred percent of my money conservative. I'm looking at CDs. I'm looking at, you know, bonds. I'm looking at money markets and savings accounts and fixed annuities. And you had this seven year annuity that you could get, I think it's 775 on the seven year. You can get 775 as a performance trigger every time the S&P 500 doesn't go down and the, and the product doesn't have any fee. So I think I positioned it to you the other day, like imagine if you were working with a investment professional and they're like, Hey, we're going to get, 775 most of the time and i'm not going to charge you a fee you'd be like that's pretty pretty good <laughs> you know and i'm not going to lose your money so that's the other thing because the index annuity it, it won't go down in value ever and there's no fee so even when it goes down there won't be a fee charge so it just was a really compelling story for some of my safer capital i don't have a lot that i try to keep safe really just my liquidity fund and my whole life insurance but inside my retirement accounts, yes, there is still a portion that sits in there in cash. So I just rolled that and rolling that over. So specifically, the only money that you're transferring, you said 34 years old right now, right? Yep. So you're only transferring dollars that are sitting in a safe, moderately low rate investment, right? A lower rate of return than eight point. 5%. Yeah, they're in cash in my, in my brokerage cash. account. They're right, cash and bonds or whatever. And you're just yeah. taking that portion, putting it over here one time, correct? Yep. One, one no, time. It. Say again? I said I'm not contributing anything to it. Just right. The, just the one your, no no yeah. further contributions because, again, you're someone that's still actively growing. So why would I, you know, put more funds over, over, over here if – I yeah. know I could get a hundred percent rate of return in my business. Right. So I totally understand right. that. Um, yeah. so that money sits there 
and it is a locked annuity for 20 years like that's that's the agreement like you can't touch that money for 20 years right well i mean i could but again it's a retirement account and i'm only 34 so i can't touch that money anyway till i'm 60 basically right so, and, so, so it'll end so, so for you yeah. it'll end at 54 it mm -hmm. would have grown by 8.5%, rule of 72. That money's going to double, right? More than double yep. of however much you put in. And then yep. at 54, do you just roll that into another annuity and write the, but, no, but it's no longer this specific type of annuity because now you're past 50. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly, Denzel. You got the if process you're 49, down. 49, so if you're 49 years old, yeah, it would go another 20 years. Well, if you're 49 years old, then you got to decide what you want to do. Do you want to keep that contract? Do you want to go to a different accumulation type annuity contract? Which again, if you've watched my content, I'm not big on accumulation annuities. I rarely, rarely use them. I'm not big on using annuities yeah, yeah, yeah. for accumulation. But in this particular circumstance, I could see this being a pretty compelling alternative index option. Uh, and again, I'm using it as my safe alternative, right? Like exactly. instead of keeping cash and bonds, I think this will do better than my cash and bonds. So I'm going to move it over. And, and, and you've here, declared, you've declared that money as retirement money at this point, declared it right. as retirement money. It's not liquid money. It's not investment money. It's not right. for a future purchase in the next 10, 20 years. That's retirement money. So when you hit 54, you're going to roll that into say another annuity at some point and just let it keep yeah. going. First of all, putting money in my solo K aligns with me because I have utilization of it through up to a $50,000 loan, which I use all the time. So I get to have my money working in two places at once. I get the tax deduction. So every year I have to put money. I don't have to, but I do put money in my solo K for my wife and I because it creates a tax deduction. And then, um, you know, that money, I have the ability to do rollovers into plans like this. But it's going to sit there until I'm 60 anyway. And I know that a lot of people think, oh, okay, well, if you're kind of growth mindset, you're younger. You're entrepreneurial you're not really going to use the conventional retirement products it's like no that's not true at all my wife at her life expectancy on her side of the family she could live into her hundreds easily so yeah i'm going to be purchasing a ton of annuities to make sure that she's covered because i won't be here you know no family no male in my family has lived past 80. every woman in her side of the family has lived to be late 90s so or more so it's like yeah i need plenty of annuity income to care for her for potentially 20 years that i'm not here so that annuity, I can roll it at age 54 into a lifetime income annuity that will now cover Jennifer, even though it's my IRA. And that joint lifetime income payment can just grow. So now I can get like 10 or 20 years deferral of that. That'll take us to age, let's see, what will we be then? 54, so that'll take her to 74. If I'm close to my mortality, life expectancy, and she's got another 30 years, that income payment will be valuable. So, you know, that's important to think. And people are always like, oh, well, that's, 50 years from now, inflation will make that payment worth nothing. It's like, okay, yes, that, that's, that's, ha, that has that's some truth, truth to it. Yeah, at yeah. the same time, I'm not using that one payment to solve inflation. I'm going to buy tons of those one payments. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's, that's the thing. It's like, you know, everybody always wants to try to like com be combative with financial solutions. It's like, look, it, so what's the alternative to that? Don't do anything. And then what's inflation going to be? You're going to be crushed. So you got to have something put in place. I'm thinking about that for my wife now, you know, most 30 year olds aren't thinking about their wife in their nineties, but when you're in retirement, that's what you think about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, you're in the space. So yeah, yeah, dude, this is good. This is really good. I haven't seen really any, any questions. I don't know if people are just stunned uh, by what they've been hearing today, but if there are questions, concerns, please reach out to Daniel and his team. Yeah. Uh, hop on a call. No matter how old you are, let's, start the conversation of yeah. what retirement looks like. What does it look like to transition from actively producing income to put yourself in an environment where you have at least guaranteed income to cover your cost of living, your needs, and then between where you are and when you'll retire, how do we also com combine that with assets that produce cash flow? So it goes yep. above your needs and now covers wants and desires. And ultimately, that's where we create financial freedom.